What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and as the 2022 laptops start to roll in, we're taking a look at one of our first ones, and that is the ASUS VivoBook S14X OLED computer. And this is something that I'm really excited about because I actually haven't tested out a computer with an OLED display before, and there's a lot of specific characteristics, customizability settings, and technical areas that this display really does excel in and makes someone who does like video for a living, like myself, very, very excited. Not only down to the colors, but the brightness, the calibration, the different modes that you can have it set to, all of these come together to have a very interesting display experience that is going to curate to creators as well as gamers out there. And on top of that, it also features the Intel 12th generation series processor set. We're gonna be talking about the performance, the design, because as you can see, it is relatively small, and of course the display, but also talking about the ASUS VivoBook S14, and that is a computer that is going to be a really good option for students out there and still has a lot of great features and power, but it's kind of a different different price point and demographic compared to like the 14X, which is really curated towards like creatives and high performance users. I'd like to give a huge thanks to ASUS for sponsoring this video. And if you guys would like to win a Vivo book for yourself, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video and leave a comment down below with your Instagram username. And I'll be picking a winner in one month and sending a message directly from my team. So don't respond to any of the comments that you get in replies. So talking about the VivoBook S14X, it also comes in a 16X option, and this one has a 14 and a half inch display. And I feel like 14 inch has kind of been like my favorite laptop selection because I've had larger computers in the past, and I find that being able to have a computer that has a ton of power, but it's still a relatively portable size and easy to bring around has been like that happy medium. So the 14.5 inch display, from a design standpoint, you can see the bezels are really, really small around the edge. The display kind of sits inside and has that glossy panel. But on top of that, this computer only comes in at a thickness of 18 millimeters, which is really impressive considering the amount of power it has. You take a look at how it's just like nicely smoothed off, rounded off. It is built out of metal and has a very nice finish to it. And over here, I like how the branding is also quite minimal. I think it just looks very sharp and professional and the tonal aspect with the matte black finish just looks excellent. On top of that, you also have your port selections on the side here, which include the Thunderbolt 4 ports, the HDMI, you also have the USB-A headphone jack, and on the other side here, you're also gonna find another USB-A port, and it charges via USB Type-C. I think for a computer that focuses on productivity, I would have liked to have seen another Thunderbolt port over on the right side, but I think you're pretty well covered here, and if you go ahead and get a dock for a desktop setup, then you're able to get all those ports that you need. It also comes in at a weight of just under 3.6 pounds. So from a portability standpoint, this is essentially just a bit heavier than something like an Ultrabook, for example, but delivers a ton of power. And if you go ahead and just like open it up, you can see this hinge actually goes 180 degrees, which offers a lot of flexibility. So yeah, I think from a build quality standpoint, they've done a very good job here. It is very simple, nothing really out there. I know ASUS has taken a few different design approaches, but I love the matte black look. And you also see a small chamfer around the metal edging on the inside, and that matte black finish carries over to the keyboard and everything as well. When it comes to the trackpad, it also utilizes this open space on the palm rest very nicely. It's 53% larger than the typical one, which for any on-the-go users is going to be very important. Other than that though, the keyboard is just like the general full-size layout. No complaints there. It is relatively tactile, and I think for any productivity user, this is kind of what it's geared towards. It doesn't have like loud mechanical switches with a ton of travel, but instead is very minimal, nice to type on, and the keys are soft and still have a good response and spacing. On the topic of productivity though, there's one small feature that I think a lot of people really appreciate with laptops nowadays, especially on the topic of security. You take a look at it up here, there's actually a physical cover for the webcam and it gives you a little orange indicator that just shows that you're covered. So it is a feature that I've seen implemented on a few computers now and it's great to see that here. So now let's talk about the display and that is easily what I'm most excited about in this VivoBook S14X OLED computer. Hence its name, OLED is a huge part. And after you've tried an OLED display on like a Windows computer, it is really hard to go back to a traditional panel, especially if you're someone who really does rely on the color rendition, accuracy, and overall experience of what the screen of a computer is able to provide. This right here is the world's first 14.5 inch, 2.8K, 120 Hertz, 
hertz OLED display, and this comes with a whole range of features that we're gonna talk about right now. As soon as you open up the computer for the very first time, it has all the great characteristics of an OLED panel. The colors are just so vibrant, they jump out of the screen, it has like a nice like brightness to it, and at the same time, the contrast in the blacks is something that you really do notice, and as someone who loves OLED TVs and has switched exclusively to them, it's great to see it on a laptop here. But what is also really nice is that you can customize the color gamut specifically based on what you're working on. So for example, in sRGB, that is more for web content. There's also DCI P3, which is what I typically use, as well as Display P3 and also Native, which gives you like the default vivid colors, but being able to set it specifically to the color space that you're working in, in like your imaging software or video editing software is a huge plus because there's nothing worse than working on a ton of content at a high level and having it exported out only to look very different on like a standard display. The HDR600 True Black paired with the 1 million to 1 contrast ratio and the fact that it is an OLED panel is also where the contrast and the blacks are just very punchy in the image and I think just gives you like a great display experience overall. But on top of that, if you are planning to game, for example, the 120 hertz refresh rate on the OLED panel gives you a response time of just 0.2 milliseconds, which is impressive. Impressive. This display is also Pantone validated. One feature that I feel like everyone could appreciate though is that this OLED panel produces 70% less harmful blue light than a typical display. And that is important for everyone because a lot of times when you spend a lot of time looking at like a computer screen, for example, and especially at night before you go to bed, the blue light can definitely cause quite a bit of eye strain, which can affect your sleep. And I'm someone who spends a lot of time in front of the computer and I've tried like different blue light glasses, but they just don't seem to work that well because whenever I'm doing like color grading, for example, the blue light might change the kind of color hue or representation that I'm seeing on screen as a result of wearing filter glasses. I know it's like really hard to explain what a display looks like on camera without actually seeing it in person, but I can tell you that I was very excited to actually test out this computer after seeing some news about like the OLED panel and just how good it is. And as soon as it arrived, it definitely met and even exceeded my expectations, as you can see from some of the video work that we're doing in DaVinci. So of course, with a great display, if you're using this computer to like do video editing or photo editing or any like artistic work, if the performance is not adequate, then the great display is essentially useless because it's not a tool that you're able to rely on. When it comes to the processors of this computer, it might look very thin and portable, but it actually has a very powerful setup under the hood, and that is the Intel 12th generation H series processor, which is impressive how it's been integrated into a computer that is only 18 millimeters in thickness. This 12th generation Intel i7 processor on paper is 2.1 times faster than the 11th gen, and when it comes to a gen on gen CPU performance comparison, is up to 2.7 seven times faster. From a graphic standpoint, based on the tests in Photoshop, it is 1.5 times better. And there is also performance gains in Lightroom being 1.6 times faster when exporting 100 raw images. And for Premiere, it was 1.2 times faster on export. This is all with very little compromise on the overall battery life. When it comes to like photo editing, I use Lightroom and I typically edit like one photo at a time. So it's not really the best way to push the computer to its max. But when it comes to putting 4K footage into DaVinci Resolve for color grading and also for exporting while having hundreds of clips, you can see that this computer was actually able to manage pretty well. But I think paired with the display experience, it is important that it has all that color accuracy through the color space that I'm able to set it to because otherwise I'm not able to edit any video or grade the footage on this computer. This model that I have in front of me has 12 gigabytes of high-speed RAM as well as a fast SSD. It is 512 gigs of PCIe 4.0 NVMe M2 SSD, which are all contributors to performance when it comes to a laptop experience and can definitely benefit the export times when it comes to Premiere Pro, Lightroom, and Photoshop. But I feel like it's kind of a given in this realm of computers being performance ones that the storage inside is pretty fast. And it's good to see that here. One of the big reasons that contributes to the overall performance of the computer, even with its small size and form factor, is the fact that it has the ice cooled thermal technology from ASUS. The heat pipes paired with a 12 volt fan and 97 blades allow the computer to maintain up to a 45 watt thermal design power continuously in performance mode. It also does feature sensors throughout the motherboard, for example, that communicate with all the hardware elements to ensure the temperature is well regulated while giving you the best performance possible. 
Because as we've kind of talked about in the past on the channel, there have been so many incredible computers that have showed up in the office and that have tested out with very high hopes, but with bad thermal setup, was not able to take advantage of the power that was inside in terms of hardware to any reasonable degree. Which kind of just seems like a weird marketing thing because you've paid for all of these great specs, but the computer was built from the start to not be able to fully take advantage or clock up to the reasonable speeds of the hardware inside. You can also set the computer between a standard mode, a performance mode, as well as a whisper mode, depending on the scenario. So for example, if I'm just checking some emails and web browsing, but I don't want the fan to ramp up, I can just have it in the whisper mode, which keeps it within 28 decibels. But if I'm like doing video editing, for example, and I'm plugged into the wall and don't need to worry about battery life to any degree, then I will of course set it to performance mode. So with all this talk about performance and displays, how is the battery life on the VivoBook S14X? So as expected, if you go ahead and buy the larger computer, it's going to have a bigger battery. But on the 14X in particular that we have right here, it features a 70 watt hour battery. And I would say battery is a very subjective thing, but there are certain measures of the computer that allow you to regulate and control the modes that you're using it in to ensure you get a very efficient experience depending on if you're on the go or or at home which is generally in line with the previous generation in terms of expected battery life while giving you better performance, which means the efficiency has been improved as well. And I would say if you're doing like very heavy video editing with all the performance modes on, the display at the maximum brightness, then you're probably going to get like three hours of battery life at the very most. But if you go ahead and have it in like the whisper mode and are just doing some light web browsing tasks, the brightness is maybe at 50%, then you should be able to hit over 10 hours of overall usage. But I would say the median is probably just around six to seven if you have it in like a standard mode with a good combination of like some performance tasks and some general tasks, which I think is a pretty accurate representation of what I would do on a day-to-day -day basis on the computer. So when it comes to wrapping up the overall experience and impression of the VivoBook S14X OLED, the most impressive feature has to be that OLED display. I think once you've gone ahead and tried an OLED display, you really can't go back to anything else, and some are going to value that OLED element a lot more than others. I'm kind of mixed in terms of glossy versus matte displays, but I would say this is definitely up there in terms of the best laptop displays that you're going to find. And the next most impressive thing is just how they put together this form factor. The computer is so thin, it has like a sharp matte black look that I think is very stylish, and at the same time provides a ton of power, good thermals, and a decent selection of ports that give you some versatility when it comes to connecting storage and the accessories and also having an external display hooked up. Whether you should get the 14 or 16 inch option is totally up to you, but I think the 14 inch option makes a lot of sense. So now that we've talked a lot about the VivoBook S14X OLED with all the bells and whistles, the latest line of processors, the thermals and all that kind of stuff, the reality is a lot of people aren't going to need a lot of those features, but really enjoy the form factor, portability, great battery life, and still a very solid display at a more affordable price point. And this right here is the ASUS VivoBook S14, and it is really designed for Gen Z. So if you're a student and you need something that is able to provide um, a great computer for entertainment, multimedia, doing your schoolwork, Word documents, presentations, and all that kind of stuff, this is a computer that comes with the 11th gen processor in both the i5 and the i7 model. It is also noticeably thinner at just under 16 millimeters. This VivoBook features a 14 inch display that is a full HD resolution with LED panel. And you can see just how thin and light it is. It has a ton of flexibility still. As you can see here, it just has like a very clean overall design that I think a lot of students are going to like. There's also a fingerprint sensor on the side here, which is nice. The keyboard and inputs are also what you'd expect out of the ASUS lineup. The fact that it just weighs in at 1.3 kilograms is probably one of its best selling point while still providing a ton of power through the i7. And if you take a look at the side ports, there's the HDMI, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, the headphone jack, and on the other side you have two USB type A ports and a micro SD card slot. So you're pretty well covered. The metal build quality is great. This computer also has up to 16 gigabytes of RAM paired with a 512 gig NVMe SSD. And thanks to the full HD display and the LED panel is also relatively energy efficient with a claimed battery lifetime of up to 17 hours. So if you're someone who doesn't exactly need the OLED display with all 
the crazy features as well as the latest 12th generation processor, but also wants good performance, great battery life, and still a very solid display in the LED one found on the VivoBook S14, then this computer is really for you and I can see a lot of students gravitating to something like this. But otherwise, thank you guys for watching this video where we went ahead and checked out some offerings from the ASUS VivoBook lineup of computers that are portable, well-built, have great battery life, and varying ranges of performance depending on your need. And if you're looking for a computer that has one of the best displays that I've seen, then the OLED model is definitely for you. And it's definitely lived up to the expectation of excitement that I had when I initially saw the announcement of these OLED models. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.